hello to all hope so you all are well today we will discuss some important questions on transporting plants it is very very important topic of the plant physiology and i have seen that many times the questions are asked from this topic all right so this is the part 2 of mcqs on transporting plants i have already uploaded uh, part 1 you can go in the playlist and you can watch the video so question number 1 now see here diffusion rates are affected by now as you know very well what is diffusion diffusion is a process where the substances move from high concentration to low concentration all right and in diffusion the movement can occur of anything whether it is a liquid or a solid or a gas all right so diffusion rates are affected by whenever uh, we discuss the diffusion topic in the class we always explain the factors which are affecting the diffusion rate and the pressure the first factor is the pressure now we must know that diffusion is directly proportional to pressure diffusion is directly proportional to pressure all right more pressure more diffusion less pressure less diffusion it is clear temperature now temperature again this is a, another factor which affects the rate of diffusion diffusion rate is directly proportional to temperature more temperature more diffusion less temperature less diffusion and diffusion rate is also affected by the concentration gradient of course uh, when we talk about the diffusion or the rate of the diffusion the biggest factor the most relevant and most important factor is the concentration gradient why because whether it is a diffusion simple diffusion or whether it is a facilitated diffusion all type of the diffusion requires a concentration gradient means always the diffusion will occur from high concentration to low concentration so the question number 1 the answer must be all of these means the diffusion rates can be affected by the pressure factor by the temperature factor as well as the concentration factor clear so diffusion rates are affected by all of these so question number 1 is having the answer d is it clear now question number 2 which of the following process requires membrane proteins which of the following process requires membrane proteins now simple diffusion as we know very well that simple diffusion never require any membrane protein in the process of the simple diffusion just the substances move from high concentration to low concentration and there is no requirement of any membrane protein in fact i will say that for the diffusion no membrane is required for the diffusions for the simple diffusion there is no requirement of any membrane protein or the membrane now second option which of the following process requires membrane proteins so imbibition no imbibition is just what imbibition is just the absorption of the water by any sol solid colloidal substance all right so here also there is no requirement of the membrane proteins you see the imbibition in the rainy season when the colloidal substances such as wood imbibe the water or the moisture in the rainy season it swells up that is called as imbibition now you can see here there is no use of any membrane protein here facilitated diffusion yes there is a big difference between the simple diffusion and the facilitated diffusion no doubt at all that the simple diffusion as well as facilitated diffusion occur from high concentration to low concentration but the difference in the simple diffusion and the facilitated diffusion is that simple diffusion never uses any sort of the membrane proteins while the facilitated diffusion always happens when the membrane proteins are available all right and the fourth option is more than one option is correct so no the process which require membrane proteins the process which require the membrane protein is the facilitated diffusion facilitated means the diffusion occur with the facility of the membrane proteins 
So question number two is having the most relevant answer that is the C. Question number three. Now it's a good question. A cell when immersed in a solution increases its volume. Now just imagine it that you have kept the cell. Say for you have kept the cell. This is a cell and you have kept the cell in a solution. You have kept the cell in the solution. It increases in volume, means its volume increase, means it's very much clear that liquid will go inside, then only the cell will, this cell will swell, right? And this is the external solution. So the question is a cell when immersed in a solution. Imagine it that a cell, a cell is immersed in a external solution, uh, in a solution it increases in volume so the external solution is so the external solution is so uh, we know very well the external solution may be hypotonic means a solution which is having low concentration uh, one solution is called as a hypertonic solution which is called as high concentration solution and the third one is the isotonic solution now always remember when a cell is kept in hypotonic solution when a cell is kept in hypotonic solution, the water enters the cell because of which the cell, uh, because of which what will happen? The cell will swell and it will increase in size. But when the cell is kept, but when the cell is kept in hypertonic solution, that is hypertonic means highly concentrated solution, the water will come out of the cell. The water will come out of the cell and because of which the cell will shrink. But here the question is, that a cell is immersed in a solution, say for, we don't know that what is the solution, just the name is given the external solution. So a cell when immersed in a solution increases in volume, means it is very much clear that this external solution has entered, this external solution has entered in the cell because of which the cell has swollen. So the external solution will be, so always remember, external solution will be hypotonic. Question number three is having the answer C means it is clearly indicating that here endosmosis is happening. Endosmosis is entry of water inside the cell. And what is osmosis? What is the definition of the osmosis? It is the movement of the water. Remember this thing. It is movement of water in the presence of movement of water in the presence of a membrane, uh, a membrane in a differential membrane. Are you getting? What is osmosis? It is the movement of the water in the presence of a differentially permeable membrane from low concentration of the solution. Remember this thing, from low concentration of the solution to high concentration of the solution. So definitely the answer must be hypotonic of the question number three. Question number four, a cell is kept in 0.4 M solution of sugar. Say for, you just think of a cell which is kept in a solution, which is kept in a solution, say for here, I am drawing a diagram to explain this question. Say for a cell, this is a cell and it is kept in a solution. This is the solution, which is having the concentration of 0.4 M and no change in the volume of cell is found. There is no change in the volume of this cell, no change, no change in volume of cell it means it is clear that the concentration of the cell sap the concentration of the cell sap will be same as that of the concentration of the external solution means it is the example of an isotonic solution it is the best example of isotonic solution and you know very well that isotonic solution whenever a isotonic condition is there there is no movement of the cell in uh, there is no movement of the water inside the cell or from the cell to outside so a cell when placed in 0.4 m solution of sugar there is no change in the volume of the cell uh, cell is found what is the concentration of the cell cell means it is very much clear that the cell cell will be having the concentration 0.4 m which is same as that of the sugar solution this is an isotonic condition where there will be no movement and when there will be no movement there will be no change in the uh, volume of the cell so the answer will be 0.4 m question number four is having the answer 
uh, that is C. Question number 4 is having the answer C, that is 0.4 M. Is it clear? I think so, it is clear. Now, question 5. Doors made up of wood swell up in rainy season. Now, just now there is a rainy season and you will say that there are some places in India and particularly this time, the different regions of the India are having heavy rains. Alright? So you will say that there are some places where there is great quantity of the moisture in the environment and in the rainy season, the doors which are made up of the wood, they swell up. Now wood is a colloidal substance and definitely the wooden doors and the windows swell in the rainy season just and just because of the process known as imbibition. What is imbibition? Imbibition is a process in which the solid colloidal substance absorbs the water. All right. So doors made up of wood swells up in rainy season due to transpiration, imbibition, exosmosis and gutation. So it's a straightforward question that due to imbibition in rainy season, the wooden doors and windows swell. So question number five is having the answer B. Question number six. Now plants plant seeds when sown in the soil. Are you getting? When the seeds are sown in the soil, they germinate and come out of it due to and germinate and germinate and come out of it due to plant seeds when sown in the soil germinate and come out of it due to we all know that seeds are covered by seed coat and seed coats are generally hard in nature beta what i have said you that seeds are covered by seed coats you might have heard about the two type of the seed coats outer seed coat and inner seed coat outer seed coat is called as the testa and the inner seed coat is called as the tegment so whenever the seeds are sown in the soil what will what will happen that the seed coat ruptures the seed coat ruptures and the young seedling comes out of that seed why now the reason is that uh, why the seed coats which are hard in nature rupture so the seeds when sown in the soil will absorb water which is a sort of an imbibition which is a sort of imbibition and then what will happen due to the imbibition in the seed a uh, imbibitional pressure will be generated and you know very well imbibition pressure is of great values so due to the imbibitional pressure the seed coat will rupture and ultimately the young seedling will come out from that seed so pergola pressure imbibition pressure osmotic pressure or the atmospheric pressure so the pressure which is responsible for breaking the seed coats and germination of the seed is the imbibition pressure question number six is having the answer b now question number seven water reaches xylem from root hairs by as we know very well that water from the root hairs water is taken by the root hairs from the soil and then it ultimately reaches to the last leaf of the plant with the help of the xylem because we know very well that xylem is the water conducting tissue now when we study the transporting plants topic then in that chapter we see that there are two pathways there are two pathways for water conduction one is known as the apoplast pathway and another is known as the symplast pathway always remember apoplast pathway is the non-living pathway for water conduction apoplast pathway is the non-living pathway for the water conduction while the symplast pathway while the symplast pathway is uh, a living pathway for the water conduction but i want to say and suggest here that the water reaches the xylem from the root hairs water reaches the xylem from the root hairs with the help of both these processes one is the non-living pathway another is the living pathway so the third option will go appropriate that is water reaches the xylem from the root hairs by utilizing both the pathways the non-living pathway known as the apoplast pathway and the living pathway known as the symplast pathway so the most relevant answer for the question number seven is c now question number eight water is mainly transported to shoot tips by the help of now when we talk about the ascent of the sap we talk about the various theories okay various theories we study whether it is a uh, whether it is the uh, relay pump theory of the gold levisky or 
the root pressure theory right or the capillary theory or the pulsation theory etc etc but all the theories at the present time are discarded because we know very well that water in the plants is mainly transported from the soil up to the top of the shoot tip with the help of a very important uh, pressure and that is known as the transpiration pull. Transpiration pull is the pull which is responsible for transporting the water up to the last leaf of the shoot tip. Is it clear? So the most potent force for water transportation is the transpiration pull. We are not, I am not saying that root pressure cannot conduct water. It can conduct water. But root pressure can conduct water only up to the 20 feet heights. But the transpiration pull theory says, transpiration pull concept says that water conduction can occur up to 400 feet. And the tallest plant which is present on the earth at the present time is the 366 feet plant. So uh, up to 400 there is no problem. Okay, the water can be conducted easily. So the best option for the water transportation is the transpiration pool. So question number 8 is having the uh, answer C. So this is the answer key for the MCQs on transporting plants. So hope so that you have liked this video. Similar type of this videos you can see uh, in the playlist of my uh, channel Biology by Dr. NSGN and you can also see the theoretical videos also. And this is the only channel in India where you will get separate videos for the English medium as well as the Hindi medium students. Means whatever language you are liking, you can go for that one. I am trying to upload all videos separately for Hindi medium students also and English medium also. So keep watching. Thanks a lot. I will be uploading the new videos very soon.